Alrighty, so the update for July 20th for the crew has officially come out and uh, in this video I want to investigate and uh, show you all the things that were fixed in this update. So okay, what were the things that were done in the crew? Well, first of all, let's start off with uh, the latest summit car for the crew has officially been added into the game, which is the Mazda MX-5. And as you can see, we have a thumbnail here. And I don't know if you look closely, it looks like it has a soft top roof, roof on it, and, but I'm not exactly sure, but the model looks incredible from the picture. So yeah, and of course we have some other de deals. And uh, there are some other things that happened with the summit, but I will get to those in a minute. So let's take a look at some stuff that's been changed with the cars. So first off, let's see what they've done with the Ferrari F40. Now, as you can see, the gauge actually works properly now. It doesn't get stuck between 0 and 1,000 uh, 1, RPM, so it actually works now. They fixed that. Now you see the gauge actually is not glowing anymore, but I will get to that later. And of course, they've also fixed up the license plates on the Ferrari F40. So, as you can see, the license plate showing on there now. And on the circuit spec F40, which I'm going to have to go get right now, one second. And on the circuit spec F40, as you can see, the license plate has been added as well. It's sitting right there on the back. But the interior gauges still do not work, unfortunately. Which I would like to see them add that in later on, but it probably won't happen. So, of course, let's take a look at some other things that they fix as well, real quick. So, next thing we have here is the Pagani Zonda R, which is the circuit spec Pagani Zonda F. And what they did was a big thing. They actually added in a digital and an analog gauge onto the thing. Before, it just had this analog gauge in the center of the wheel. But now it actually has this digital gauge in the back, which the real-life Zonda R has. It's not exactly accurate. It's the, it's the basic gauge that they have for the crew, but at least it's something. And at least you can actually see the speed, your gear, and the RPM on there as well. And for the most part, oh, my car is all snowing. For the most part, this thing is just basically exactly the same, except for that interior gauge. Another thing they fixed is the Lotus Evora, uh, Lotus Evora GTE. Now before, there was a trim piece missing on the door. This big rubber trim piece that's supposed to separate the window between the door so on. You can actually see through. And I'll post a picture on here. Uh, right about now showing you what it used to look like but now as you can see it's actually fixed and that's a good thing because I actually put that on the forms and they uh, they actually listened to us to fix it good thing they fixed it I'm glad because it looks a lot better now now here's the big thing that they changed they added a new feature to the cars gauges where the cars gauges turn on and off depending on light conditions so in this case and they actually even turn on and off when you're in a tunnel not just when it gets dark or dim so in this case I'll show you right here right now with this RX-7 I'd say the gauges actually look a lot better this way and as you can see they're slowly turning on and now they are fully on as you can see and let me just drive through the other tunnel and I'll shoot through the other end of the tunnel and you'll see them fade out as soon as I get out of this long ass tunnel. Here we go. And as you can see, they have completely faded out now, which is pretty cool. And of course, you can control them with nighttime and daytime. And as soon as I stop here, I'll show you that. With photo mode, we can control this. So as you can see, they're off, off. But as soon as it gets into nighttime, they turn on. And then as soon as it gets to daytime, they turn off, which is pretty cool. But there are a few issues that have arisen with this particular setup. So here we are looking at the Super BRZ Perspec. Now, uh, as you can see, ever since they added the, uh, the dimming and brightening gauge feature, uh, you can't really see the gauges working on the Super BRZ, and that's a big problem. It, they're hardly noticeable. This isn't actually the worst gauge that I've seen. I'll show you a couple of really, really bad ones. Hold on. 
Now here you actually see the Selene S7 and as you can tell, the you can't see anything on the gauges at all. They're just completely just pale, but if you probably go to a different angle, you'll start to see them a lot better. But as you can see, it's, it's not very good what they did. And I'll show you some extremely bad ones right now. So here, here's another one that's really just as bad as the Selene. As you can see, it's the Pagani Wire. You can't see the gauges at all on this thing either. In the shade. I hope they'll fix this at a later stage. So now here we see the Mercedes C63 AMG Black Series Coupe. And as you can see, there's like literally nothing on the gauges here. Even if I go into like a brighter area, you see that there's basically nothing on the gauges at all. So, yeah, they, they seriously need to fix this issue. And I'll show you ones that actually are perfectly normal. So here we are with the Volkswagen Golf GTI, and as you can see, the gauges are actually illuminating. You can see them perfectly fine. And they always illuminate, by the way. There's there's no difference, and as you can see, the headlights are off. It's just the gauges themselves illuminating. And uh, let me show you the Touareg. So here we have the Touareg, and as you can see, the gauges are also illuminating on this thing. And let me actually go out, and I'll show you uh, in photo mode real quick. So now here we are in photo mode, looking at the gauges. Let me just turn on the clouds so that you see that the gauges are actually still illuminating. They're kind of dim, as you can see, they dim down just a little bit, but as soon as you go into nighttime, they become brighter and they have more of like a halo glow. But uh, let me actually show you the worst gauge, the worst kind of gauges so far. So here we have the Lamborghini Aventador, and as you can see, the gauges are just completely messed up. The RPM gauge, as you can see, there's actually the the RPM gauge needle right here, but there's also a kind of ghosted one right here, and that's because the gauges are dimmed. And I'll show you that this is this is indeed a glitch, and it's nothing wrong uh, with my game or anything. So here we are in photo mode. As you can see, I have the RPM needle sitting at about 5,000 RPM. So let me leave it in clear sky mode, and I will change the gauges so that it beca it's in nighttime mode. And as you can see, as soon as I turn the gauges into nighttime mode, the real arrow stops glitching. And of course, the gauges actually even change to something else. As you can see right here, there's kind of an Aventador ghost thing right there. This is just basically the entire gauge of this Aventador is just glitched out like crazy. So yeah, this is a pretty necessary fix, I'd say, for this car. Now here you actually see we're in the summit right now. And this is a thing that Race Master Dave discovered with uh, the summit prizes. Now as you can see, the uh, the no reward, the no, basically the no medal thing is perfectly fine. The bronze medal is kind of weird because you just get extreme spec and you have no way of getting crew credits. Then you go to silver, and then you uh, it changes a little bit. The boost pack's gone on here. You go to gold, same basic thing as silver. But as soon as you get to platinum, you see that the crew credits pack is the only thing you could basically get out of uh, just having platinum. So, as Race Master Dave said, this could only assume that the next update is probably not gonna be very very good for the crew, judging by this. But uh, there's actually a few more things that have gone wrong with the crew now. now the next is issue has to do with smart loot, and I'm going to use driving tests as a way to show you what's up with the game right now. So here we are, I'm back again. After using my uh, Subaru Beers, I should use it from the start, but whatever. As you can see, you do not get double cash anymore. I, I got like pennies from the double cash, quote unquote, double cash system from back in the day. And as you can see, it was nothing. I got like 331 bucks as compared to what the actual mission gives you, which is like 1,321 bucks. So they've completely nerfed the double cash system in this game, which is kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's not too big of a deal. Breaker, because it'll prevent you from just grinding on one mission over and over and over again. But yeah, I guess. This update was good, but at the same time it had issues, which, uh, of course, it, it's going to have, so I hope they'll fix these issues in the future. Not the smart loot system or the crew credit system, but mainly the gauges, and I've already uh, told the devs about this issue. So, okay, another thing they actually, uh, well, I, uh, let me actually get into what they fixed real quick. They fixed the free drive challenges in two ways. They fixed the timers, so now it's not limited to three minutes. 
with when you finish the free drive challenge so the leaderboards will work properly they also fix the speed trap event for the free drive challenges and that's basically all about it oh and they also broke this car by the way the engine sound is completely wrong uh, well not completely wrong it's just different and it doesn't sound 100% accurate it's uh, the same sound for the circuit spec perf spec and full stock but I'm gonna drive the circuit spec one here for you guys so let me rev it for you It sounds basically the same when you actually rev the Gallardo, the engine sound, but when you actually drive it, you start hearing the sound difference. It sounds like a combination of the Gallardo's engine sound before the patch, and the Pagani Zonda R's engine sound. Now what I'm thinking is, this is a sound that was uh, specifically made for the circuit spec Gallardo, because it sounds very, very race car-like, the engine sound. So yeah, it fits perfectly with this thing. And I was just trying to avoid that skill because I don't want to trigger it. Or, the, my other speculation is this is actually a testing sound for a brand new car. It's coming to the crew in the near future. Uh, the Huracan, maybe? Because this is the only viable car that I would think. Because it sounds... The Huracan sounds like the Gallardo, but it sounds just a little bit different. Because of a new modern engine. And, of course, an exhaust system, but... Other than that, it, like I said, it really sounds like a Huracan engine sound, but at the same time, it, it sounds like a Gallardo, like uh, an engine sound that was just designed for the circus big Gallardo. We'll find, we'll, we'll figure out what this was for eventually. If they change it back, all the Gallardo engine sounds to the stock, to the Gallardo engine sound before the patch, then that means that it was just a testing sound for something. Or if this one keeps uh, this, the circuit spec Gallardo keeps this sound, and all the other and the other specs of the Gallardo change to the ones before the patch, then that probably means it was just designed for this car engine sound. So yeah, let me just repair this beast, pull over and repair it. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.